The last time we saw our heroes, they had just narrowly escaped mind control and defeated Vandal Savage in the process. We now see them fighting a monster in the sewers of Gotham City with some new team members, five years later. We quickly learn that some of the latest additions to the team consist of Beast Boy, Bumblebee, Nightwing, Blue Beetle, and Lagoon Boy. While these new heroes are exciting enough, the most interesting thing is that MGAN and Superboy are no longer together. Upon their arrival back at Mount Justice, the young Martian embraces the new aquatic team member, Lagon, and gives the boy a quick kiss. We then see a rather gruff and clearly annoyed Superboy pass by the embrace mumbling something about taking a shower. The question to be asked now is, what happened in those five years that led to their separation and why does Mgon not seem as affected as Connor does? We don't get that answer quite yet as we are transported to Washington DC, where a new villain is attacking the United Nations. As he is approaching and about to attack the Secretary General, we are able to see two more additions to the team, Wonder Girl and Batgirl. They are quick to jump into action in order to save the Secretary General, however, the villain, who looks like he belongs in a KISS cover band, easily overpowers the two young women. He manages to catch the government official and tear him in two, only to reveal that he had been an alien in a robotic suit the entire time. With a couple of confusing words that were nowhere near English, he takes the small spawn and departs the scene. The most disturbing thing about this entire interaction is the idea that an alien had been posing as a person, let alone a person so high up in the government this entire time. Without letting anyone take a breath, a newscast is shown and a reporter is cracked out like a raving lunatic sprouting fear for aliens. He continues his ranting and raving as he calls upon the Justice League to do a better job at figuring out who's an alien and who isn't. As he continues ranting, he throws the broadcast over to his associate who is outside of the Justice League building where we learn that Satana and Rocket are now official members of the Justice League. The two women enter the building as the news reporter is shut out by the League's public liaison. This block of questioning then causes the original newscaster to continue his psychotic rant about what else the Justice League could be hiding. Back in the Watchtower, a couple of heroes are listening to a Green Lantern say that the smaller alien, which has now been identified as a Krolotian, usually travels in groups. This means that he must not be alone. A man is brought forward and is addressed as Adam Strange, a scientist that helps maintain the transport beam that assists the team onto the Watchtower. Through the Martian's mind link, he recalls an incident where he was transported halfway across the galaxy to a foreign planet. After apparent weeks of being there he was able to communicate with the aliens to learn that some of their technology had been stolen. According to Green Lantern, the Krolotian's culture revolves around stealing others' technology, making them suspect number one. The scientist then informs the heroes that the aliens of Ran, who accidentally transported him though their planet, equipped him with a device that would allow them to see when and where the Krolotians have been transported to Earth. They are making a plan to allow Adam Strange to take some of the team to Ran in order to cut off the Krolotians at the source. However, the scientist informs them that six heroes are not allowed in that corner of the galaxy. These are the six heroes that had disappeared for 16 hours under Vandal Savage's control. They still don't know what the villain had them do while away, but it must have been bad enough if they aren't allowed in an entire section of a very large galaxy, as they are about to send other members of the League that aren't banned from that section. Strange informs them that every member of the League is on a watch list so none of them would be able to enter the area. This leaves Nightwing to come up with the plan that the members that aren't officially a part of the League will try to take care of things. He separates the young heroes into different teams to cover enough ground and look for different Zeta tubes being used by the Krolotians. Lagoon Boy, Robin, and Blue Beetle are sent on what the aquatic hero dubbed the Soft Gig and are sent to a junkyard in New Orleans. They destroy a tool shed and find no Zeta tube, however, traveling underwater through a secret tunnel and into a hideout swarming with the tiny green alternate lifeforms. While being informed to lay low and wait for backup, the three young men are caught and swarmed by Krolotians to which Blue Beetle sarcastically teases Lagoon Boy about it being a soft gig. As we are given a glance back to the team's headquarters we learn that the Alpha and Beta teams found maybe one or two Krolotians, but the Gamma team was the lucky winner who found their headquarters. They quickly save the human hostages that were kidnapped and used to make robot doubles of them, from underneath the base. The Krolotians had set the hive for self-destruct giving the heroes a small amount of time to help everyone, including themselves, escape. When they emerge from the water with the burning debris behind them, the rest of the adult members of the Justice League show up just in time for the fight to be over. At the same time, Adam Strange arrived on Ran with Miss Martian, Superboy, and Beast Boy. They need to figure out how to help stop the Krolotians and also to decipher what happened to the six members of the Justice League during the 16 hours they don't recall under Vandal Savage's control five years ago. On episode 2, the episode opens on a planet where Superboy, Beast Boy, Miss Martian, and some random woman are getting absolutely pummeled by a giant robot. 
As the machine gets closer and closer to the unknown woman, Superboy uses his body to shield her, and the two are thrown and left dangling from a cliff. It is here that we learn that they are still on Ran and that the mission was supposed to go completely differently. Flashing back to their arrival, we are informed that the random woman is actually named Alana, a Ranian that had been friends with Adam Strange. Hemgan quickly steps in and links the group mentally in order to make translation and communication easier. Worried about prying eyes, Sardath ushers the Zeta squad indoors. Strange inquires why Earthlings are unwelcome on that side of the galaxy and Sardath says that the Ranian science command is xenophobic generally. They are also unaware of Sardath's research into the interplanetary Zeta beam travel, which means that they are unaware of the Krolotian theft that is occurring. The two Ranians inform the young heroes that there were six wanted outlaws for messing with things on Rimber, the six members of the Justice League who went missing for 16 hours. The Ranian scientist comes up with a plan to shield the other Zeta beams from interacting with Earth while still allowing the ones on Earth to function uninterrupted. This shield would trap any Krolotians on Earth if they were already there. Alana offers to help them reach the Zeta platform on Ran and informs them that they will need disguises because of the hatred toward Earthlings harbored by the people of the planet. The team makes their way onto a train to head into the jungle when the planet's local police board to do routine ID checks. Strange decides that he'll be the distraction and runs toward the officers reciting the poem, Jabberwocky from Alice in Wonderland. His crazy antics lead the police off the train in time for it to depart with the rest of the team on board. During all of this, Alana and Strange share a sweet moment while Mgan and Connor watch along, clearly uncomfortable. Beast Boy, who is now disguised as an animal of the planet, looks between the two noticing the discomfort, and smirks mischievously. He awkwardly tries to get the two to discuss their previous shared time together but is interrupted by Superboy ready to kick the doors of the train and continue their mission. In the jungle, they find the Krolotian headquarters and Miss Martian sneaks inside and opens an entrance for the rest of them. The team plants bombs in order to blow up the six Zeta platforms but just as they are about to leave before any explosion occurs, the aliens receive a transport of more Krolotians. The team is trapped with bombs and pissed off extraterrestrials. The bombs explode before any of them can get out allowing the Krolotians to notice the heroes trying to escape. In the planet's main city, the Ranian police force is out ready to search for Strange and the rest of the possible intruders. In the jungle, the team realizes that the rest of the Krolotians must have come from Earth after the other team members destroyed one of their bases. We are now brought to where the episode has begun, Superboy holding Alana, dangling from the edge of a cliff, and being chased by a giant robot that resembles a crab. In a quick decision, Superboy lets go of the cliff, and Superboy and the Ranian are able to hide in a nearby cave. Beast Boy and Miss Martian hide up high in a tree, and the four decide it would be best that they all stay put until the Krolotian search teams lay off. Alana decides this would be a great time to get the information that everyone wants to know from Superboy, what happened between him and Mgan. We learn, after a brief discussion about how Superboy will always stay good-looking and young, that he dumped Mgan. Alana informs him that it is clear the Martian still has feelings for him, but he denies it, leaving us to believe that there is still something to be shared about their story. The Krolotians depart from their search and Mgan and Gar decide that it is safe to leave. While the two travel quickly through the jungle, play fighting the way siblings do, Beast Boy stops dead in his tracks while staring at a waterfall. He transforms into his former self without even realizing it. We are shown a quick flashback of a car crash where he is left standing in the same position. Mgan rushes over to comfort him and we are reminded that this is the same Garfield that Miss Martian saved with a blood transfusion back at his mother's animal sanctuary. However, we still don't know what happened that led to that car crash other than the fact that Queen Bee was involved somehow. Due to their embrace by the waterfall, the two don't realize that the Krolotians never left and they are shot by something and taken hostage all in the blink of an eye. The entire base that was in the jungle is jetted off to Krolodia once they learn that the two Earthlings have been captured. Superboy and Alana notice that something has happened to Miss Martian as the two can no longer understand each other. The aliens struggle to chase Alana and Superboy through the jungle, and the young Kryptonian takes out multiple robots. He rips open one of them to find both Mgan and Gar unconscious, but okay inside. However, they still aren't safe as the giant Krolotian ship shoots at them from above. Superboy and Beast Boy attack the ship above them and invade it while Alana wakes Mgan up. As she is jolted from unconsciousness, a couple of Krolotians try to get their people's attention from the ground. The Martian wastes no time and uses her telekinetic powers to grab one of the aliens and choke it out, saying nothing, stealing his sash, and walking away. The ship is highly damaged, but it makes its ascent and leaves the plant. The heroes on board have enough time to jump off and join the two women on the ground. Superboy looks over and sees two of the Krolotians take their buddy away. Superboy asks the Martian what happened but she only says that it's time to get back to Earth. While the team didn't accomplish everything that they had wanted to, Miss Martian claims to have learned what happened on Rimber in those missing 16 hours. The six heroes are finally going to learn how much damage they had caused under the control of Vandal Savage five years ago.